Welcome to Real Vision. My name is Santiago Velez. I'm co-founder of Block Digital Corporation, and I'm excited to introduce today Mr. John Trass, CEO of Dimitri. Uh, welcome, John. Thanks, Santiago. I'm really glad to be here with you today. All right. So uh, I, I learned about your project through a mutual colleague, and what I found so interesting about it was this confluence of technologies and methodologies that you're using. Uh, I, I really want to go down that rabbit hole today, but first, if you don't mind just telling the audience a little bit about yourself, kind of how you formed this project and your kind of experience in technology, digital assets, uh, machine learning, et cetera. Yeah, absolutely. So I started in technology many years ago, over 25 years ago, and started as a developer. I've also worked a lot in large global supply chains. So working with the Canadian government and corporations in the automotive and consumer goods and energy spaces. Um, I've been implementing technology in supply chain for the bulk of that time and have executed about 150 projects. So loads of experience in lots of different areas one of the most intriguing areas to me has been food and agriculture. And, and I've done a number of projects in that space with organic companies and, and large food companies, as well as on the retail side. Um, a couple years ago, I built a, a blockchain based identity system and was implementing that in Africa. And as I went through that, I started understanding the needs for um, agricultural applications, particularly for smallholder farmers. Uh, large farms and large corporations tend to be self-sufficient from a technology perspective, but there seemed to be quite a, a gap in the smallholder farm area. And that was really intriguing to me because, you know, as a child, I grew up going to my grandfather's farm for the summer and working on the farm and seeing he, how he you know, planted his crops and managed his cattle and, and the whole farming experience was uh, very formative to me from a, a childhood perspective. And then I moved into technology and supply chain consulting and got to see the, the downstream end of, of uh, what farmers produce as that food gets processed and, and packaged and sent out through the retail channels. And to me, it was really intriguing to uh, find ways to advance technology for this underserved market. So uh, that, that all occurred a couple years ago, um, started building elements of the application for different customers. And then last year decided to package it all together under the brand Demitra and uh, set up the Demitra application itself and the platform itself. And it's just been a whirlwind ever since. So lots of great activities going on. Yeah, that's fantastic. So uh, that, that name to me is very interesting. Uh, as I understand it, it comes from a, a Greek mythology, a, a goddess, right? Who is a provider of, of uh, bounty for, for, for the people. Is that, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Demetra is the the goddess of the harvest, and essentially, her role was to teach uh, people how to have a bountiful harvest. So uh, we went through a selection process of of names, and, and that was perfectly fitting. You know, one of our objectives is how do we help people? How do we educate people? How do we teach them to have a more bountiful harvest and provide for the community. So um, once we ran into that name, we knew we had a, a good fit. Yeah, and it seems that uh, the, the thing that I found most fascinating about the project was taking what is these technological advancements typically reserved for very large agricultural producers or corporations and bringing them to everyone, right? Any farmer that could benefit from whether it's uh, blockchain, uh, supply chain, machine learning, uh, whatever technological solutions that are out there, making them more accessible to everybody. Can you tell us a little bit about specifically what the platform does for small farmers 
and how you intend to kind of execute on it to bring bring your vision uh, to them. Yeah, so there's a pretty broad spectrum of what we're doing for the farmers and what services we're providing. Uh, initially, we started with the registration of farms and how do you register a farm so that they can take advantage of different government services and and support around the world. And then we started building upon that and looking at what we can do from a, a supply chain perspective. And as I mentioned before, supply chain is my background. And, you know, a lot of it was around how do you track goods from the farm to the plant when you're selling it or to the market or to export, which are really the three core areas. Um, and having worked with SAP and JD Edwards and all of the big players from a ERP perspective, I was looking at that functionality and seeing that the functionality didn't um, support that smallholder farmer. There's no small farm in the world that can afford one of those comprehensive end-to-end -end ERP systems, but they do need the, the functionality. There's so much more pressure being put on the farmer to comply with export regulations, to comply with food safety requirements and, and preparing that documentation so that they can get a premium price for the product has really been left to those large corporations. And, and what we're doing is we're enabling that with the farm. So we felt, you know, let's start with the land and, you know, how does a, a farmer prepare the land and how do you take those farmers in the world and help them prepare the land better with sustainable technology. So we've hired PhD agronomists and soil specialists who come into our company and, and we've built out functionality and we're continuing to build functionality to help the farmer translate their crop goals into all of the activities that have to take place on a farm. And this knowledge has been passed down through the generations, but in the last 25 years, and, and even more so just in the last five years, there's been so much advancement in methodology for farming. And to take farming from what we may have done in the past in a lot of cases, which is destructive to the soil or is destructive to the land and move to a sustainable method. We want to share that information with farmers. So a farmer can start with a, a goal of, I want to grow more corn and put a geo fence around their farm, um, identify where the corn is going to be planted. And we can start from there. We can take a satellite snapshot of their farm and we have about 17 reports that we can run that will give us very valuable information around that farmer's piece of land and how that might relate to corn or any other crop. And then we supplement that by asking the farmer questions about the soil. And we may ask them to go out and take some pictures or um, complete a survey so that we can add more information to the mix. And then we go and we take information around weather, information around topography of the land, potentially bring in some soil samples with a sensor. And we feed that all into the Nemitra machine learning engine and come up with recommendations. And those recommendations can help not only improve the output or reduce the cost or help the farmer mitigate risk, but do that in a more sustainable method so that the deterioration of the soil that we've seen over the last hundred years um, isn't as significant. We can, we can still maintain biodiversity of the soil. We can still maintain the carbon content and the organic content in the soil. And that just creates a whole bunch of benefit, not only to the farmer from a long-term perspective, but to the environment and, and some of these bigger macro challenges that we have in the world, like global warming and soil degradation and, and you know, water, uh, fresh water supply, and, and, and then just the, how do you feed the world? 
you know, it's, it's really interesting to me in that there's 610 million farms in the world and about 570 million of those farms are what we call a smallholder farmer. Those smallholder farmers are under four hectares of land and they contribute about 70% of the world's food. When they're producing that food, they are huge contributors to environmental challenges if they don't follow sustainable methods. So, you know, when I look at the front end of farming and that, that land portion, there's so much opportunity to improve not only output, which helps solve the world hunger crisis, but methodologies around that can help capture more carbon, can help uh, maintain soil, soil biodiversity, and can really help um, each individual farmer perform the best that they can with the piece of land that they have and the goals that they have. I hope you enjoyed this clip and will decide to join us for the rest of the interview, among many others on realvision.com forward slash crypto. The crypto channel is 100% free. You just have to sign up. Look forward to seeing you there.